Hello everyone and welcome back to another Roots. I am so glad you decided to join us this week and I just want to say everyone here at Antioch, we really miss you. We, we're praying for you and hoping uh, that you guys are staying safe in this shared experience that we're all going through, the, the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever it is that you want to name it, we just pray that you're staying safe and being responsible. You know, in the Bible, names not only identified people, but they oftentimes also had a very important meaning behind them. And today, we are going to see how God changed Jacob's name to show a bigger change in Jacob's life. But before we get too far into the story, I just want to recap a little bit, all right? Does anyone remember what uh, the big picture question is? It's, it's, does God keep his promises? And the answer is yes, God always keeps his promises because he is faith. And knowing that definitely keeps me going when I have a huge task ahead of me, but God promises to provide. And God had made a promise to Jacob to provide. God had made a promise to Jacob's grandfather, Abraham, to provide. And God had made a promise to Jacob's father, Isaac, to provide. See, see, God had this plan for Jacob. Even though Jacob was the younger brother, God wanted Jacob to receive the blessing of the family. And years before, if you remember, years before, Jacob tricked his father into giving him the blessing in, instead of giving it to Esau. And then Jacob ran away to escape Esau's anger. Then God met with Jacob and promised to be there for him. And so now after 20 years, God told Jacob that it was time to go home. And on the way home, Jacob had another surprising encounter with God. And I cannot wait for you to hear about it. So let's listen. Parents, if you want to follow along or if you want to go over this story later, we're going to be in Genesis 32 and 33. Jacob took his family and all of his possessions and left the land of his uncle Laban and headed home to Canaan. And going home meant that Jacob would see his brother Esau again. And Jacob was afraid that Esau was still angry and would still be angry at him for stealing his blessing. And so Jacob sent messengers. They scurried on home ahead of Jacob to tell Esau that Jacob was coming. And they came back and told Jacob that Esau is coming to meet him with 400 men. And so Jacob was really, really afraid. God had promised him that his family would be as numerous as all of the stars in the sky. But how could that happen if Esau was going to kill them all? Jacob then made a plan. He was going to divide his family into two groups. And if Esau attacked one of the groups, maybe then the other group would be able to escape. Then Jacob asked God to keep his promise. Jacob prayed, please rescue me from my brother Esau. And Jacob sent a large gift of animals ahead of them. There was goats, there was sheep, there were camels, there were cows, there were bulls, and there were even donkeys to try to make Esau happy. Maybe then Esau would forgive Jacob. And that night, Jacob moved his family across the stream where they might be safer, but Jacob stayed behind. And as the night came, a man appeared, and this man was actually God himself. And the man wrestled with Jacob the entire night. Jacob refused to give up, and so the man injured Jacob's hip. Let me go, the sun is coming up, the man said. But Jacob would not let him go. I will not let you go unless you bless me, Jacob said. Your name will no longer be Jacob said the man, your name will be Israel because you wrestled with God and with men and you have won. And the man blessed Jacob. The sun came up and Jacob limped because of his hip. And now Jacob looked and he saw Esau and his 400 men coming toward him. And Jacob went to meet Esau. He bowed down seven times. 
That's a lot of bowing. And he bowed down seven times to his brother. Then Esau ran to Jacob and hugged him. He was not angry anymore. The two brothers then cried together. And Esau returned to his home, Jacob to his family, and they traveled on to Shechem. And Jacob bought land for them to live on. He was finally home in the land that God had promised to him. You see, God had changed Jacob's life and had given him a new name. Jesus came so that we might have a changed life, forgiven of all sin. Jesus' death and resurrection provided sinful people like us a way to be adopted in to God's family. And when we're adopted into the family of God, we also receive a new name, and that is children of God. And you know, this Bible story is fascinating to me because it's, it seems that Jacob actually had two really long journeys here. The first one, of course, was the really long journey across the land. Like he, he had to walk for several, several days. And then he also had a really long journey in his relationship with God. From the very beginning, God always promised to bless Jacob and be with him. But time and time and time again, Jacob just didn't trust him. Jacob tried to accomplish God's will on his own. He tried to accomplish God's plan on his own, and he never seemed to fully trust that God would keep his promises. He never seemed to fully trust that God would keep his promises. And does God keep his promises? God always keeps his promises because he is faithful. And now, for Jacob, it was time to face his biggest fear yet. Seeing his brother, after 20 years. You know, Jacob ran away because Esau wanted to kill him. And how did Esau feel now? Jacob really didn't know. Did he still hold a grudge? Jacob had no way of knowing. And so as he prepared to meet Esau, Jacob prayed to God. He prayed to God for protection. He prayed to God for safety. And he got more than he asked for. Jacob encountered God in the form of a man and he wrestled with him. And at daybreak, the man injured Jacob, but Jacob wouldn't let go until God blessed him. And God changed his name to Israel, the name of God's covenant people, the name of the people that God made this promise with. And God did bless and protect Jacob. God had already softened Esau's heart. Esau was no longer angry with Jacob. Jacob could stay with his family in his new homeland without the fear that he felt for the past 20 years. Jacob was finally home. Now, God not only blessed Jacob, but he gave Jacob a new name. Jacob meant deceiver. His new name was Israel, which means struggles with God. God changed Jacob from the inside out, and from then on, Jacob would look to God, not himself. The same is true for us. When we trust in Jesus, God changes us from the inside out, and Jesus forgives our sin and adopts us into his family. When we are adopted into the family of God, we also receive that new name, children of God. And so from these stories, we have learned of God's promises to Abraham. We've learned of God's promises to Isaac. And we also learned that the promises that he gave to Abraham, the promises he gave to Isaac, are the same promises that he gave to Jacob too. And God showed Jacob in a dream that he would bless Jacob's family, which would grow into a whole nation, the nation of Israel. And as part of his plan to bring Jesus into the world, as the savior of the world. So that brings us to question time, all right? Make sure you pause the video to answer these questions with your family. First question is, how does God change us when we trust in Jesus? When a person trusts in Jesus, that person goes from being an enemy of God to being a member of God's family. 
Colossians 1 verses 21 and 22 says, At one time you were separated from God. You were enemies in your minds because of your evil ways. But because Christ died, God has brought you back to himself. Christ's death has made you holy in God's sight. So now you do not have any flaw. You are free from blame. God changes us from the inside out. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. God changes us, and it takes some time. We don't always just transform overnight, but by the renewing of our minds, God changes us from the inside out to be more and more like his son, Jesus. The second question is, how can God use difficult circumstances for our good? Sometimes, you know, difficulties can draw us closer to God, leading us to, to turn away from our sin, to stop relying on ourselves sometime, and to become fully dependent on trusting Him. 2 Corinthians um, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9 says, Brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the hard times that we had in Asia Minor. We were having a lot of trouble. It was far more than we could stand. We even thought we were going to die. In fact, we felt as if we might be under the sentence of death. But that happened so that we would not depend on ourselves, but on God. He raises the dead to life. Difficult things happen. We're going through difficult things right now. But these are times when we can learn to not depend on ourselves to get through, but to rely on God, to put our faith in Him. And the last question is, what are some ways that God has blessed you? And how can you be a blessing to others? God has blessed us significantly with his love and his grace. And he showed us by providing Jesus as our savior that, that he loves us more than anything. And as we live for God, he calls us to share the same love, the same grace with everyone in our path. Colossians 3 verses 12 to 14 say, you are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Do not be proud, be gentle and patient. Put up with one another, forgiving one another if you are holding something against someone. Forgive just as the Lord forgave you. And over all of these good things, put on love. Love holds them all together perfectly as if they were one. God has called us to be his chosen people. God has called us to be his ambassadors. So this week, in your homes, shower each other with mercy and love because there's not a whole lot of other people you can show mercy and love to right now. Um, I love you guys, I miss you guys. I hope you're doing well. And again, if you need anything, uh, please don't hesitate to give the church a call. Thank you.